Tonight on the Muskie Daily, a new art show comes to campus. The Red Cross is in need of volunteers to install smoke detectors. And students have the chance to thank former teachers. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to the Muskie Daily. I'm Johnny Newhart. And I'm Chad Holmes. Muskingum's chapter of the American Red Cross needs volunteers. According to Marlene Henderson, Ohio ranks fourth in the country for fire-related injuries. To help, the Red Cross will be visiting Zanesville neighborhoods tomorrow. The group's goal is to inform people how to install smoke detectors correctly and to educate the community on what to do in the event of a fire. Muskingum University is cracking down on sexual assault on campus. Title IX training is a requirement for all students, and the campus is now providing programs which focus on gender so that students can better understand what some of their peers might be going through. Although still in its early stages, Title IX program also aims to help students better understand their rights. It's a process. We're nowhere close to having a program that's done and canned and there. It's just continuing to work through it and see what we can do. Although Title IX training is required by the university, there are still no repercussions if it is not completed. More information on Title IX can be found on muskingum.edu under the Campus Life tab. The new Muskingum University Library is not open for fall 2015 semester. However, Board of Trustees Chair Hal Burlingame is excited about the progress being made inside the building. Burlingame had the opportunity to tour the Roberta A. Smith Library earlier this month. I can't believe how much progress they have made. I mean, they have, you know, furniture that's not in place, but furniture's in there getting ready to be put in place. Rooms are being finished. I mean, enormous amount of activity is going on over there. This is going to be one absolutely wonderful facility for uh, Muskingum students. The library's new opening date is slated for January 2016 for spring semester. Students have the opportunity to thank their high school teachers for helping them get where they are today. Thank a Teacher form is provided by the Missions Office and is available every year to anyone who chooses to fill one out. One Muskingum University junior shares why she thinks it's important for college students to show appreciation to the teacher they, they had in high school. I fill out these forms because I feel like it's important to get back to your high school and explain to them how grateful you are for everything that they did for you. They are partially a, a reason why we're here today in college, so I feel like it's a good thing to thank them. Muskingum University professor Bill Kerrigan teamed up with students this summer to research Civil War memory. The group based their work at Camp Chase's Confederate Cemetery. The goal was to find out how the past events are remembered and how memories change over time. The opportunity was available to the students through the Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program, known as Muskie Fellows. Interested individuals should talk to the professors to get involved. There's a new art exhibit on campus. The Louis O. Palmer Art Gallery is hosting a new exhibition called Wood, Wool, and Ink. Unique artwork by John and Janet Taylor Lehman and their sons will be displayed for the community and the students to see. Director of Art Professor Yam Sun invited the couple to come to Muskingum to display their artwork. The exhibition includes several mixed media pieces that include wood, wool, and ink. And so we chose pieces that were going to fit under those categories. So we have some rug hooking. I've Art exhibitions are displayed on campus to benefit students and display the artwork. Wood, wool, and ink will continue to be displayed in the Louis O. Palmer Art Gallery until October 1st, open to all visitors by appointment. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at the arrest of a Texas teenager. And later, a look at your orbit weather forecast. Stay tuned. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. The 
Muslim teen arrested after bringing a homemade digital clock to his Texas school is seeing his fortunes change for the better. Ahmed Mohammed was arrested and handcuffed Monday for what police initially said was a bomb hoax. Authorities opted not to charge him, but his arrest took social media by storm. Now it seems like everyone wants to meet and help this 14-year-old pursue his science and engineering dreams. President Obama invited him to the White House next month for an annual astronomy night. Facebook creator Mark Zuckerberg expressed interest in meeting Muhammad, while Twitter offered an internship. A former NASA engineer offered him a scholarship to Space Camp USA, and an MIT professor invited him to tour the university. He's even got a scholarship offer from an international business school. Some Florida drivers jumped to the rescue of the kids on this school bus in Tampa after it overturned in a lake. 27 children were on the bus Thursday when witnesses say it approached a curb too fast, left the roadway, and overturned in a lake. People driving by jumped in the water to help. Witnesses say the drivers stayed on the bus to help the children to safety. Many escaped through the rear emergency door, which had popped open. Investigators are trying to determine what caused the crash. Witnesses say the bus was speeding at the time of the accident. The Honda Civic is getting a major makeover. Honda unveiled a, the production version of a 2016 compact car Wednesday. The new Civic has a sportier look, longer wheelbase, and new LED headlights. It also has technology that makes it easier to use smartphones while driving. The makeover comes amid troubling times for the Civic. Sales are down 4% this year, and the car is being outsold by Honda's CRV crossover. We'll be taking a break. We'll be taking a short break, but when you come back, Andrew Dunlap will have this week's weather. And later, we'll look at the latest Fighting Muskie sports action. This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. Good evening, folks. It is time to check out your local weather. Tonight is going to be looking clear with a low of 55. Tomorrow is going to be another enjoyable day, mostly sunny with a high of 83. Tomorrow night, it will become mostly cloudy with a low of 61. Now we take a look at your extended forecast. And after the break, we are going to take a look at what's going on in sports. Today in the Muskie sports world, the volleyball team won their home opener Wednesday night, defeating Franciscan in straight sets. The Muskies dominated the first two sets of the match, but had a little hard work getting the third one and, and secured a match. Senior Brooke Scott led the attack with 13 kills on the night, while sophomore Deirdre Prince and first-year Ashley Reynolds led the defense with 15 digs. The Muskies had a season-high hitting percentage, with 30% in the match. The, net, the Muskies will next take their 6-4 and four record on the road to the Wooster Invitational Friday and Saturday. The men's soccer team fell at home Wednesday night to 12th-ranked Denison 2-1. The Muskies battled hard without so star sophomore Trent Newby. Newby broke his collarbone against Wooster 
and has been ruled out for the rest of the 2015 season. The Muskies were down 2-0 late in the match. Brett Hanna scored a goal in the 80th minutes, trying to spark a musky comeback. But the, but the men couldn't get another goal on the board, though, uh, in the loss. The Muskies now stand 2-2 two two on the season, with the home match against Franciscan coming up on Saturday. Game time is slated for four. It's going to be a busy weekend for Muskie sports, as almost every fall sport team is be, will be competing. The cross-country teams will be at St. Vincent Invitational on Saturday, while both the golf teams will be at the Tiffin at Heidelberg University. Both of the Muskie soccer teams are going to be in action Saturday as the men play host to Franciscan, while the women will host La Roche earlier in the day. Women's tennis will be back in action against Adrian at home, and the football team will, of course, be at Mount Union. The volleyball team will also be on the road starting Friday at the Wooster Invitational. That's all I have for sports. When we come back, we'll be back at the desk with Chad and Johnny. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. Student Life is once again hosting Camp Muskie. Students will have the opportunity to camp out in the hollow next weekend on the 26th and 27th. Camp Muskie will offer the participants games, food, and fun. If you are interested, you must register on OrgSync by this Friday to rent a tent and enter the raffle. The third annual fishing derby has been moved to this Saturday at 5 at the Campus Lake. Students can bring their own poles for one category, but the poles and bait can be provided for the other. The three largest fish in each category will be the winners. No sign-up is required, and t-shirts will be passed out to some lucky muskies. The event is sponsored by University Police and Student Life. The University Chaplain is teaming up with Westminster Presbyterian Church to look for volunteers to help out a local elderly couple this Saturday, September 19th. Interested individuals are willing to lend a hand. A welcome to email Chaplain Will Mullins for more information. No materials are necessary. The group will meet at the steps of Brown Travel at 10 in the morning that Saturday. That's it for the Muskie Daily. Be sure to stay up to date after the weekend by picking up a copy of tomorrow's Black and Magenta. WMCO will be broadcasting Friday night's John Glenn football game on 90.7. Have a good night, New Concord.